Have you ever been out thrifting and you come across something that's so familiar and you realize your family had it while you were growing up? That's what just happened to me with this calico blue little creamer here. I'm almost positive that my grandparents had it while I was growing up. Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. It's been a busy week. Last night I was honoured to be a guest on the Cult of Vintage, Michael Todd's YouTube channel. He does an amazing job along with Misty, Thrifter, Junker, Vintage Hunter. Uh, it's the Vintage Rescue Squad, question and answers. I had a fabulous time. Danny, the niche lady, my dear friend, was on with me too. And tonight we are together again on Cat the Nurse Flippers channel. She is also fantastic, full of tons of knowledge, useful information, so much fun to hang out with friends. So if you didn't catch that, go to the Nurse Flippers channel and also check out the, um, the Cult of Vintages channel. Cat and Michael, thank you so much for the honor of being guests on your show. So, without further ado, I only have a couple of hours to shop before I'm appearing on Kat's channel. You see Goodwill behind me, it's my favorite one. Let's go inside and see what they have. Let's go thrifting! It's a Tuesday afternoon, I'm at my favorite Goodwill. I've got a couple of hours to shop here and then I'm appearing on Cat the Nurse Flippers channel. I'm looking through the window and I can see that the color of the day is purple. So all purple tags are 50% off. Let's get a cart and see what they have. This time last week in this Goodwill, I was lucky enough to find a collection of 10 Asian teapots. Now I've had so much interest in these teapots. So many people have emailed me wanting to buy them, but nobody's made me an offer. So I want to put the question to you to respond in the comments if you would. Should I list these on eBay? Should I list them as a whole collection? Should I list them individually? I would really appreciate your opinion. Our new house is coming along. Our bathroom is almost finished. We're going to be able to move in very, very soon. Bear is doing fantastically with the cats. Ziggy is very comfortable with him. Bandit's almost there. They're going to be fast friends. I'm in the hard goods and the first thing I'm spotting is what I think is a little Peruvian terracotta piece. Oh, no. oh, it's completely cracked on the bottom with a big hole. That's such a shame. I'm going to leave it for that reason. There's a little cross here too. What else do they have? It's a big apple cookie jar at the back there. I think we've seen that one before. Oh, look at this lovely little mini vase. It looks Portuguese. Gorgeous little hand-painted flowers. I'll take that. I'm going to have a look to see if there's any more of those. This is a sweet little owl. He's just quite lightweight and not very good quality though, and I'm going to leave him. Up here on the top shelf is a lovely mixing bowl by Furio. Uh, it's a gorgeous leaf pattern and it feels like there's another one inside. Now these used to sell really, really well for me on eBay. So I'm going to pop them in my cart and uh, check recent solds. I am going to be a bit careful though because bowls like this do take up a good chunk of real estate in my storage so they have to be 
worth it and sell for a good profit for me to pick them up. This is really interesting. It looks like a Yankee Candle piece, but it has a different signature on it. This tape on it is preventing me from picking it up with one hand. Uh, it says Michael Sparks. I'm going to grab it and pop it in my cart and do a bit of research because I want to learn about it. It does have a massive chip on the inside rim, so I probably won't be buying it. Here is a Jesus statue in a bag. Down here we have an interesting box. Always open the boxes. You never know what's going to be inside. Lots of figurines here, angels. There's some baggies down here. I'm scanning these baggies just to make sure I'm not missing any of those Peruvian nativity figures that I picked up last week. Some note cards. Doll. This is interesting down here. It's a big fish dish, pos possibly a shrimp platter. Oh, it's really, really heavy. It's made in India. It's $8. I am going to leave this piece for someone else because it's really big and heavy. It's going to take a lot of space in my storage and uh, I just don't see enough profit in it to make it worthwhile for me. Over here we have some vintage wall hangings. They're $2.99. They're chalkware and unfortunately they're quite damaged on the floral pieces there. Back here we have what looks like a California pottery vase. Oh, it has a big chip on the rim. It's 99 cents and it doesn't appear to be marked. It just doesn't have the right weight to be California pottery either. So I'm going to leave that one. This is interesting. It looks like a project half an orange bookend <laughs> and this looks like one of those gravity waterer glass bulbs that you water plants with although it says it's a wishing ball that is really interesting new with tag I'm going to pop that in the cart and uh, see what those are selling for on eBay Just checking this bag to make sure there's no nativity figures in there. Little ducklings. Checking through the candles here. There's a, another metal dish. Again, it's made in India. Very, very heavy and $8. Oh, look at this globe. I really like globes. They sell very well for me. I like the vintage ones. This one appears to be modern. It's quite damaged uh, on the axis there. But I am interested enough to put it in my cart, look it up and see what these are selling for in good condition. a tree topper up here these are Kurt Adler pieces um, again quite bulky and large and just not enough profit in them to make it worth it for me for resale so I'll leave those for someone else it's a little ceramic pumpkin a wind chime
This looks like a silver plate bowl. It's quite lightweight, so it's not real silver. It's engraved from the Jewish community of Columbia Point. Checking the bottom for a mark. I do see something there, so I'm going to pop it in my cart and uh, in a minute use my camera just to enlarge the uh, inscription so I can read it. And the clear glass here, platters and bowls, lots of trinket dishes. This is interesting, looks quite nice. I'm going to turn it over and check for a mark on there. I'm not seeing anything. In the clear glass, I'm looking for Waterford, Steuben, uh, Baccarat. Some Mikasa pieces are quite collectible. This is a lid of a pumpkin. Sadly, the base is nowhere in sight. Candles up here. I still haven't found a glassy baby votive. That is on my bucket list. And the seasonal items, Easter eggs and a bit of Christmas still, Valentine's Day. Fall items, St. Patrick's Day. They just brought out a brand new cart to restock the shelves. So I'm having a quick peek just to see if there is anything that I want to take before it goes out onto the shelves. I'm not seeing anything here. It's mostly toys. So let's wander back over here and have a look at the Christmas aisle. They still seem to be restocking Christmas. They must have just boxes and boxes of it back there. Here's an Easter egg. Appears to be a glass trinket box. Another baggie I'm going to check. That is a nativity scene, but not part of my Peruvian one. Loads of ornaments still. Signs and cards. Little baggie of stripy Santas. Look at these little snowmen. I love these hinged displays because you can stretch them out or concertina them together. They're really fun to add depth to a Christmas display. For three ninety nine, I'll take that. Oh, look at this. This looks like it could be part of the Peruvian nativity. Black pottery. Maybe there's more in here. No. Oh, I'm excited. I really think those black cows are part of it. I think that's just a project piece in there. Checking up high. Some quite fun little figurines, lots of Santas. It looks like somebody had a large collection of 
Santa figures here. This guy's unique. I've not seen that before. It's a light up. Looks like a gingerbread snowman Christmas tree. This fellow is quite fun. I think I'm going to pop him in the cart and see if he's marked on the bottom under that sticker. This one up here is actually quite similar. They might be by the same maker. It's another little hinged snowman set. This one's very, very heavy though. And oh, it's chipped. It's chipped on the top there. That's a shame. I'll leave that one. Here we are in the vases. Not many today. The shelves are a bit sparse. Let's see if we can find anything fun. Mostly florists pieces. Let's see. Oh, that's very lightweight. I like the drips of this, but it's uh, a florist piece. This is amazing. I don't know if you can tell, but the little houses have cutouts in them. And the texture of the trees is fantastic. I love this. It's terracotta and it's beautifully painted with lovely shades of orange and yellow. I'm definitely going to get that. It's another terracotta piece. It's very plain. This is a lovely little white vase. It's really nice quality, quite heavy, nicely glazed, really smooth, and it's only 69 cents. That'll work well in a winter display with some blue cobalt glass. This piece is interesting, but it looks like it got wet on the bottom and uh, I don't think it's very good quality. Checking up high. Oh, these are very interesting. These are glazed gourds. I think they've been glazed and patterned. There's three of them. They're all different shapes. This one looks like a pumpkin. <laughs> and there's one more up at the back here, if I can get it. it this one looks like a pear. These are amazing. Oh, I'm going to have to get these. They're only $1.99 a piece. The colors are fantastic. Just checking the planters. Quite often, you can find a vintage planter with flowers in it and it gets missed or looked over because everyone's focusing on the flowers instead of the planters. There's a fruit bowl back here. I like these because you can hang your bananas over the top. We're in the metals now. Lots of racks. Buckets, it's a mirrored sign. I do like this, but sadly it's really, really scratched up. It's in rough shape. It's 
candle holders up here. Some little wire baskets. Mirrors. Trays. It's a crystal candle holder. Sadly, neither the candle holder nor the crystals are very good quality, so I'm going to leave those. Lots of wine racks and candle holders. Nothing is jumping out at me here. Stocking holders, yo. <laughs> Some tins and canisters. Dream until your dreams come true. That is excellent advice. Oh, that's quite fun. It's made to look like a gift tag. Look at that. Some more signs here. Here we are in the mugs and I'm spotting another little painted vase. Oh, I thought it was going to be another piece of Portuguese pottery, but it's very, very lightweight. Not ever such good quality, so I'm going to leave it. Checking through the mugs here. Not too many today. I wonder if they're going to restock shortly. Some Corel there. I have a similar set. What's this? Amphora. This looks like restaurant wear. That might be a good buy if there was more than one. Either two or four. But just the one. Uh, I'm going to check it on eBay, but... I'm going to say that there would need to be more than one for it to be worthwhile. Here's an owl glass. Oh. It's very lightweight. I don't think it's a vintage Libby one. A friend's mug. These are really interesting. They look very historic, like a medieval tankard. These are actually quite popular on eBay because folks use them when they go to Renaissance fairs all dressed up. So I'm definitely going to grab these. Let's find a spot. Several of my subscribers suggested I use my thrifting blanket in a sort of an omelette fashion, fold it over and uh, give myself some layers of cushioning, which is a brilliant suggestion. Thank you, everyone. I do like these blue stemmed martini glasses.
Just don't think it's worth me picking them up though. Just not enough profit in them. Just scanning the shelves. Any advertising pieces. I did notice a few boxes of Riedel glassware on the top shelf there. Riedel is an excellent brand. However, those ones uh, were etched with a personalized message and that just brings the value of them right down. Just checking on the shot glasses. Oh, look at this. It's almost like a little carnival glass touch on the bottom that's lovely don't see anything else in the glasses They just brought out yet another cart. So I am going to sneak around here and have a look. This one appears to be mostly Christmas goodies, but you never know. Oh, this is lovely. Look. Oh, it's a Denby. It's an English piece. I love it. It's a little jam jar with a lid. Let's get that. Little apothecary jar. That's quite modern and lightweight. think that's going to be it for there. Oh, what's this? It's a little penguin and toucan salt and pepper. You know, I don't think that base goes with them. Oh, possibly does. I have to show you these. They are snow globes. This one is the New York monuments, including the Twin Towers. And the other one, I believe it's Times Square uh, on New Year's Eve. They're absolutely fantastic. And this little um, salt and pepper set, I'm really not sure that this base goes with them. Um, so I'm perhaps going to put this back. I'm in the wood and the signs. frames some baskets here oh this tray back here is interesting let's see oh it's plastic I was expecting it to be ceramic that was weird Well, this is fun. We are always looking for a bottle opener. So perhaps I will pop that on the wall in our new kitchen. Let's see. So many signs. There's some fruit napkin rings. 
This is a lovely bread basket, but sadly the corner of it is uh, water damaged. And I would have guessed it was a vintage, but it appears to be quite modern. Jewelry box here. This poor little trivet is still here. Knife blocks. Oh, look at this. This is a vintage hamburger patty press. It's got a lovely rooster on it. It needs a good uh, dose of mineral oil there. But that's a lovely piece. It's only 99 cents. More frames down here. It's a charging station. Looks like a project piece uh, key hook plaque. Baskets. All sorts of odds and ends. Oh, this is lovely. You know, Danny the Niche Lady has a lovely uh, wall where she puts all sorts of bird pictures. And this would go perfectly on that. I'm going to get this for her. The little flag. Looks like a, a birdhouse wine rack down there. Mirrors. Not seeing anything else I have to have on this shelf. This is a Chewbacca Chia pet from Star Wars. <laughs> Sadly not worth much. But this I think I might have missed last time. It's a JCV Hunnic tile believe a Scandinavian artist and the detail is amazing and I just noticed this quite sweet little piece of uh, ceramic it appears to be hand painted I am going to peel the sticker and take a peek to see who the maker is in just a moment here we are in the kitcheny bits the shelves are a bit empty here today, but hopefully we can still find one or two treasures. Just a few bowls. This one's quite an interesting shape here. Have you ever been out thrifting and you come across something that's so familiar and you realize your family had it while you were growing up? That's what just happened to me with this calico blue little creamer here. 
I'm almost positive that my grandparents had it while I was growing up. And I think it's quite valuable. I do love these cobalt little Sunday glasses back here. They're nice and weighty. I don't think they're that old, but they're a really great color and they're only 99 cents each. Let's take those. What's back here? This is a teapot. Ooh, that's really heavy. Yeah, I don't think it's very old and I just, uh, I'm going to leave that for someone else. It's a Denver Broncos cutting board. Then bunny platter. And Joanne's, it looks like. Ooh, look at this. The weird and wonderful always sells. This is a uh, Day of the Dead little figurine head. Lots of pie dishes back here. Bakers. Some terracotta. Oh look, here's another Kurt Hadler piece. The line is Happy Chick. But again, unfortunately, I think these pieces just don't uh, generate enough profit to make it worthwhile for me for resale. But I am going to pop it in the cart and check eBay recently sold just to double check. Some canisters here. This fun chef one is still here. A little tea service for one there. Some coffee uh, canisters. Into the travel mug section. Some little coasters here. Tequila. These are quite nice, but again, I don't know that they're going to bring enough profit, but I will check. I'm popping a lot of little items in my cart today to check comps on eBay just because I feel like I don't have that many items. So it's important to me that um, I don't miss anything and I come home with enough to offer for sale. There's a kettle there. Let's have a look at this picture. It's quite lightweight. It's got a couple of chips, so I think I'm going to leave that. Just turned up this aisle and I'm seeing a Denver Broncos clock up there on the shelf. It's brand new in the package, but ooh, it's $10. I think I'm going to leave that for someone else. And here is a linkable black light. This is going to be really useful for testing uh, uranium glass and cadmium glass and manganese at home. And this is an Atari flashback game. It's $25. And I'm just not that comfortable with electronics. So I'm going to leave this for someone else. I'm in the plates and dishes and I noticed this lovely piece, which is a really interesting shape. And it has a artist sticker, Blue Heron Pottery. It's signed on the back. And I know that I saw a similar piece in the very first style. I think it was a little picture. So I'm going to pop this in the cart. 
and let's go back over to the first aisle and see if that piece is still there. We'll walk a bit slowly and film on the way just to see if anything catches our eye down here. It's just a couple of aisles over. It's quite busy here now. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh, there it is. I see it on the shelf. It is. It's the exact same design. Fantastic. Let's find a spot for it. And I'm actually seeing one more piece on the shelf that looks like it's from the same artist. It's a little dish, possibly a soap dish. So let's take that as well. Let's have a stroll through the frames and the art before we go. Just to see if we can find anything fun. Don't think there's anything there today. Let's take a look through the furniture. Some white cubes. Lots of little end tables. Dresser. That sewing machine is still here. They want $50 for those. This is the little pet corner here. Nothing today. Let's have a quick peek at the cushions. I'm seeing something fun down here. It's an outdoor cushion. You are my sunshine. It's a bit lumpy, but it's very cute. Here in my light box, I have the lovely Japanese trivet that I found in Goodwill last week. It's marked Japan on the bottom, but I don't know if the camera is picking up, but it's in really quite rough shape. The wood is very dried out and cracking, and it's in need of a good moisturize and oiling. So I have a paintbrush here, just a regular children's paintbrush, and I'm just going to dust out this ridge to clean it a bit. Then I've got the cloth back here 
to wipe it on. Then what I'm going to do is use my Howard cutting board oil. It is food grade and uh, safe for consumption. And I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of the oil around the trivet and then so you can see what I'm doing I'm just going to lift it up and with my paintbrush I'm going to go around the ridge first and I'm hoping that you can see that the trivet is just soaking up the oil actually what I'm going to do is put the brush down in a second once I've moisturized this ridge really well and just use my hands because I found that my hands work a whole lot better rubbing the oil in and there's a lot less waste So I'll just put the oil on my hands. I don't really want to get it on my light box. So <laughs> I'm just going to rub it in to the trivet here. All over with the grain. Get the edges. edges are just pulling the oil off my hands I can feel it just soaking it up there hoping I'm not making you dizzy turning this around I'm just going to keep turning it in my hands getting as much oil as I can into the trivet what a difference already can you see that absolutely gorgeous now I'm just working around rubbing the oil in all over it might take a couple of coats to get it fully moisturized so you can still see those dry areas there it's been oiled but the wood is just sucking it up it's going to turn it over some more more oil there there's a bit of sticky from a label there too and if I give it a rub the oil will actually take that off too And if you can see that difference as the oil gets absorbed into the wood but it's quite significant just rubbing it around and I can feel with my hands the areas that are dry as the oil gets pulled into the wool the wood <laughs> some of the oil rests on the top where the wood is moisturized so I'm just going to rub it around bring it up to the sides onto any areas which will absorb more oil then what I'll do is let it sit I'm not going to rub it off just let it sit overnight on a piece of newspaper and by morning this wood will absor have absorbed all of that oil but I am just thrilled with the difference in that lovely trivet 
looks absolutely gorgeous now that tile is lovely ceramic design and the back of it it's gorgeous rich color now the little japan mark is still there the little feet are there look at that Here on my stairs is everything I found at Goodwill. I'm not really sure why I thought I didn't have very much, because I have an awful lot. A few of the pieces are pieces that um, got left in my car from previous shopping trips, and uh, I'm going to touch on those too. Ziggy and Bandit are here. Bandit has claimed the Thrifting Vegas blanket He's made himself very comfortable and now Ziggy's going to try to steal it from him. <laughs> oh, these brothers are so cute. Ziggy's feeling like Bandit needs a wash. That sweet Zig. Okay, let's start over here, go from one side to the other. First, while I was shopping, a really sweet gentleman gave these to me and he said, these are Pier 1 and I know you're fond of Pier 1 items and they were actually purple, which was half off. So these lovely little drink uh, charms were just two dollars you put them on your drink at a party and you remember which one is yours they're lovely this is a vintage rooster hamburger patty press obviously well used lovely piece it was 99 cents and i value it at 15 dollars this was a bit of a sleeper. I didn't quite realize what I had until I looked in the bottom. Let's put up against Bandit's Black fur, see if you can see it too. In the bottom is an F in a shield. That tells me this is federal glass and it's got a lovely pink carnival hue in the bottom. And when I looked it up on eBay, these sell for about $35, amazingly. I paid 69 cents. This was the little piece that I remember my dad's parents, my grandparents having. They lived in Bournemouth. And I am going to peel the sticker now and see if I'm right. Let's see if it's... Oh, that is very sticky. See something there. This is exciting. It says, made in England. It's a lovely piece, blue and white floral, it's got a little decorative relief on the handle, I paid 99 cents for it, I value it at 30 to 35 dollars. This is a lovely little miniature Portuguese vase stamped Portugal on the bottom, hand painted. I paid 99 cents for it. I value it at 15 to 20 dollars. 
this is a super little glossy white vase, bud vase. I love the lines, I love the shape. It's not marked. I paid 69 cents. I value it at $20. This is a piece of Blue Heron Pottery by Jane Avery. It's lace impressed and handmade. So she'll hand make the piece and then push lace into it to create the impression and the design. And then she'll paint it. She's so talented, absolutely beautiful piece. This platter I value at $50. The picture created in a similar way with lace is valued at $35. They're all signed on the bottom. And there's a little soap dish here. It's really lovely and it's got a little hole in the middle so the water can run out value this one at 15 to 20 dollars back here is one of my favorite finds it is a gorgeous vase that is uh, cut out in the shape of little houses if you can see that they go all the way through there's also trees on there, amazing texture, it's beautifully done, absolutely love the colours. I paid $2.99 I believe and I value it at $65 to $75. This is what is known as a wishing ball and gratitude glow and what you do is you write your whoops, your wishes and what you're grateful for on a little slip of paper and then there is a hole in the back of the globe where you'll just roll up your wish on the paper and post it in there and then you end up with a globe full of rolls of paper of your wishes so really fun idea great for kids I paid five dollars for it I value it at twenty five dollars look at the amazing cobalt blue of these uh, ice cream sundae goblets they're absolutely gorgeous I just love them they're really lovely and heavy lovely glass I paid 99 cents for them and I value them at 12 to 15 dollars each. Behind the goblets is a lovely wall hanging. It says love you more with little birds and I'm going to give this to my dear friend Danny, the niche lady. She has a wall where all the pictures are of birds or include birds or about birds so this will just be perfect for her in front here we have a Denby of England little jam jar it's made out of ceramic it's glazed inside has a lovely brown and white design, classic colours, design goes around the base as well. There's the mark, Denby of England. It doesn't have a spoon but you could use any little jam spoon you have. You could also use it for chutney or relish. And it actually matches so wonderfully with these three decorative gourds I found. They're glazed and decorated with some simple mid-century modern looking circles. They all stand up on their own. They would be very, very attractive just on a shelf or with some vintage books or a couple of vases. 
I paid $1.99 a piece for them. I value them at $10 to $12 each or all three for $25. Back here we have a really fun bottle cap remover. It says bottoms up. You fix it to the wall and I think this is going to find a place in the kitchen of our new house just so we never have to look for a bottle opener. Back here I have a lovely blue and white tile. The artist is JC V Hunnick. The detail is absolutely amazing. It's an image of a uh, old-fashioned kitchen with a made cooking soup it looks like she's surrounded by children and there's an old lady doing some needlepoint in the background with a cat and a dog at the table it's a lovely scene it has a hook for hanging I paid 99 cents for it I value it at 20 to 25 dollars Here we have a little group of snowmen. They're hinged. They're really lovely. You can angle them any way you'd like. And they fold up for easy storage. I paid $3.99 for them. I value them at $20 to $25. Another couple of sleepers that I didn't really realize what I had are these two musical snow globes. They're scenes of New York. This one includes the Twin Towers. And amazingly, this one has been selling on eBay for upwards of $60 and $70. And there's one listed for 250 The other one is not quite as profitable, yet still good. There are some listed and sold for $50 and $60. They both play music. They both have glitter in the bulbs. There is a little bit of water loss in the bubble here that happens very often here in Vegas because it's so dry but they are still stunning pieces. Back here is a piece that I forgot to include in a previous haul. It's a little raccoon and one of my subscribers told me she collects raccoons. I'm not sure whether her collection would include a guy like this, he's made out of grass, but he's really sweet. The detail is amazing. I paid a couple of dollars for him and I value him at $15. A lot of you were asking me whether I picked up these magnetic salt and pepper shakers, the nurse and the sailor from the uh, classic nurse and sailor is it world war ii photo they um, magnetically kiss one is salt one is pepper i paid 3.99 for them and i value them at 15 to 20 dollars this is an ornament and i'm not exactly sure what it is. I'm wondering if it's our link um, Ferris wheel ride here in Vegas. I tried to enlarge that little sign but I couldn't. It's actually made of glass. It's a really nice ornament. I paid $1.99 for it and I'm still working on its value. If anybody recognizes this and can tell me what it's representing I would really appreciate it. Here we have some amazing 
vintage ornaments. They are flocked deer with gold antlers. They have little almost uh, blanket saddles on with a hook for hanging and uh, little, uh, little chest fur here. There's a sort of burgundy color one and two blue ones. They come with three bows, one blue, one green and one red. I value this whole lot at 30 to $35. These were really interesting to me, historical tankers, sort of a medieval theme with dragons. They are metal inside, possibly pewter. I paid $4.99 for this one. I value it at $35. This is a little shot glass with a similar design. I paid $0.99 cents for this one. I value it at $15. These are absolutely fantastic. If you know somebody who participates in Renaissance Fair, where you dress up in medieval garb and uh, drink beer and eat turkey legs. <laughs> this caught my eye because it was so unique and a little bit scary. It's a Day of the Dead little skull with a flower on it. I paid 69 cents for her and I value her at 12 to $15. I was really excited to find these two because I believe they go with the little Peruvian nativity set that I found last time. Two little cows or oxen. The detail is amazing. You can even see the little legs folded back as they're laying down. This one has something odd going on with its ear. It's not really broken. I don't know if it was just created to portray the ear at a different angle but they are just lovely strangely not signed but I'm almost positive that they are part of that set the last thing I had was my black light and I am going to use this to identify and light up the uranium, manganese, and cadmium glass that I find at the thrift store. Thank you so much for watching. We are still in the process of moving, as you know, so if you can bear with me, with, with your patience, if you're interested in anything you see, just shoot me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. I'll hold the piece for you and once the dust has settled I will send you an invoice and mail it off to you. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! There's wagging his tail, look. <laughs>
Couldn't take it anymore, huh?